Hi, I'm Grandpa Gary, and I just got here. And uh, today, we're gonna fly the Habu without the wheels on. We're gonna belly land this thing in the grass. And I'm gonna show you guys, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through the whole process of taking the wheels off, just so you guys can see it, because it isn't, it's pretty easy, but it, there's still something that if you, ha if you don't have one, you don't know. So I thought I'd share with you. And uh, then we'll get this thing in the air and see how it does. So obviously the first thing you gotta do is pull the canopy off. There's a little indent right back here. Pull it off. And before you even take those back wheels off, we're gonna take that screw out right there on the control arm. And then uh, just need a small screwdriver. And mine wasn't in super tight. We're going to take it all the way out, just like that, and you want to, what you're going to do is, once we take the wheel off, we'll put it back in, but you got to get this little bit out of here, control arm, and of course, like every YouTuber always says, it's kind of tough to do with just one hand, but... Got to work it off the Z-Bend, and we're going to put that back on to the wheel here, because all of it, as you can see, this part all comes out, and there you go, and then you'll just screw it back on top of there. You guys can figure that out, I'm not going to show you that, but then the other part is then the rear wheels, and let's hang that rudder off the back super easy you can see it just clips in place so you just gotta pull it forward just a little bit if i can do her just a little pressure forward there we go Shoot. you want to maintain control of the plane with your other hand but since i was doing it one hand you can see it just pushes in just do that for the other one and you're done. I did want to take a second and show you guys my battery placement. Uh, somebody told me the sweet spot for this plane on the battery size is a 1500 milliamp hour battery. And uh, if you guys can see that, I got a 1550 50C Ovonic FPV battery and it's laying flat on the belly and just about all the way back we're going to have to do a little bit of work to tuck the wires in, but I wanted it back pretty far. All right, let's get this thing in here. All right, guys, I have the Habu out here. You can hear that it's in safe. I have the wheels off. I got the 1550 in there. I'm out here on the cricket pitch because the wind's coming out of the west, and so now i got to launch it towards uh, the parking lot. And uh, what's going to be important to the hand launch is to keep the wings nice and level with the horizon, uh, nose up just a little bit. And the last time I did the hand launch, I did it from these little fingertip spots. And today we're going to do the discus type launch, grabbing a hold of the end of the wingtip. I've seen them do both ways in their video, for the, but you just kind of want to come up from behind. You want down here, down low, and then release right there. Full power. I got throttle cut off. And we're launching it. Luckily, the sun's behind the clouds right now. And you kind of want to run the throttle up just so you can feel it lift up. It's not as strong as a prop plane, so we're going to give it a little bit of go. But I want to release it like right there. And uh, if I come around too far, it's going to be over there. But... I want to go straight at that pole over there, or those trash dumpsters. Hopefully we won't need to just throw it in there when we're done. All right, let's do this. <laughs> oh, come around, safe. <laughs> Woo, we'll get it back over here away from the sun. Sun came out just as I released it. We will take it out there to the football practice field. I am zero throttle right now, just letting it come down a little lower. I am still in safe. And we're gonna, one other thing I wanted to do with this video 
is just kind of put around. I don't want to get it going too fast. And uh, with the wind I'm dealing with, not horrible though, guys. The wind is somewhere in the 8 to 10 mile an hour range, so it's not like I feel weird about flying. I'm just, uh, it's a smaller plane, so wind affects it a lot more than others. And so we're going to we're gonna take it easy on this battery and just see how long I can fly it around. Not quite like a sailplane, but uh, we're, we're going to... We're gonna test it out here and see what kind of times we can get. Now, I'm not gonna have a time for you guys to, on the screen or anything, but if you're watching along, you're gonna see how long I can fly. I just wanna cruise around with it. If you guys know anything about the E-Flight Haboos, they have the STS version. It's a trainer uh, designed to be your very first plane uh, it's an edf jet but it is super easy to fly and that's by design that guys over at horizon wanted that to be a possibility if somebody just was set on an edf jet that they could start out with one you can see just how slow this can handle even in this smaller format you can see now when i turned with the wind it started to sink on me a little bit and that was all part of making sure that battery was back far enough because if I get it too far forward that knows what it just fell over and uh, I've had that problem with a bigger jet and many of you have seen when I flew the 90 millimeter Viper I had a giant battery in there uh, and uh, I had it too far forward and too slow in a turn and she just fell and I hit the power to try to save it but I was really low to the ground kind of like where I'm flying now you can see man this thing is on rails even in this wind was safe on I keep playing with the throttle trying to keep it below half throttle especially into the wind maybe getting a little bit high and the downwind just to keep control because you have to have airspeed to be able to control these because all your push is from the tail so no air being generated from a prop to go across those tail feathers or the wings so it's all about airspeed slowing it down a little bit getting it nice and low carrying my downwind a little farther up in the air or a little bit higher and then when I bring it by closer I'm bringing it down nice and low and it'll be something like that for the landing on this next pass we'll turn safe off here we go safe is off nice slow roll no safe save me over there you see just how much the wind was affecting it in the downwind and uh, safe was handling all that for me you see it handles just fine into the wind but when I'm coming out of the wind and turning with it it was blowing those wings pretty hard let's bring it around here had to throttle up to make that turn So my timer for my five minute timer is going off now, but I believe I still have plenty of time on the battery. Safe is back on because I wasn't liking how much it was messing, the wind was messing with it uh, for just trying to do a like a time study type flight and see how much safe is helping keep it stable when I'm going into the wind it's almost not affecting it at all because of safe correcting for every little bit of wind a little extra power in the downwind and then when I turn back in after I've gotten it back into the wind I can slow down just a little bit So right here, 
backing down to about quarter throttle. Now if it was a little stronger wind, potentially I could get it kind of stalled out into the wind, but I don't know that this is the right airplane to be trying to do uh, hover or um, kiting, but you can see it's it's handling this amount of wind pretty good, and I'm just kind of having fun. This is kind of you know if it's your second or third airplane, and you put it in safe, you could do this. Uh, 3S, 1550 milliamp hour battery. It's gonna have a pretty decent flight time with the speeds being this low. I expect to get some audible warnings from the radio. Woo, nice and low there. I didn't pick up enough speed in that turn and we got it really low. I was carrying pretty much that whole down leg. I was carrying the same speed as the end of the wind. And that's kind of why it worked its way down low like that. And when I get this slow, the timer stops, but I've already ran through the five minute timer. Seems safe trying to fix a stall that I had it in there. I'm using a lot of rudder to bring it around quicker, guys. If you didn't notice, you know, the ailerons only let you go that far. Kind of like that. There, I'm giving it full rudder, or full aileron. Here we got it coming back into the wind and a big gust. Let's bring it around to the left. A little bit closer on the downwind. And then we'll turn it around down there, giving it rudder and aileron, trying to make a tighter turn. It looks so good going nice and slow like that into the wind. And, uh, you know, if this is going to be one of your first five airplanes, we'll say, you don't want to fly it around this low, probably. If, especially if it's your first EDF. Keep it up in the air a little bit. Don't be trying to play in the wind like this. Um, pick a nice, calm day. Not sure if you guys can hear the wind in the microphone, but we are getting some gusts, which is also, you know, sometimes you might be able to handle the wind, but the gusts are what really mess the airplane up. So that is also something to consider. I think it said that I'm over by three minutes now. So that would be eight minutes, I think. And I believe if I gunned it, I would get a warning. Or maybe even the pulsing. Uh, you know, the you get a pulsing when you start get to that low voltage cutoff. At which time, if you're up high enough, it's time to bring it into your pattern for the landing. We're doing plenty good on the voltage right now, or power. Unfortunately, I'm not capable of looking down at the radio to see what it's saying for voltage. I would have to land, and I don't really want to do that, so we're going to fly it until I, I notice a warning or uh, the pulsing. And I got a feeling this airplane could fly quite a while. There we were closer to the half throttle pushing it into the wind. You could see it was climbing just a little bit. And potentially they have that built into this plane 
for launch or launch mode. Designed to climb uh, when you hand launch. Some some of the airplanes by E Flight are designed to do that. I am zero throttle through that turn because I got too high. Still zero throttle. Just gliding. All right, this next pass will go full full throttle pass. Just uh, make sure the battery's warming up here. Push them full down on the elevator. Lots of power in that battery. Sounded strong still. So zero throttle on the downwind, bringing it around. Quarter throttle into the wind here. I think it just said minus five minutes, so we're probably at 10 minute flight time. And that's not including zero throttle passes and uh, any time that I got below a quarter throttle. Still going good and strong, guys. So somebody that told me the 1500 or in my case, the 1550 is the sweet spot for this plane, I believe is very correct. Um, with my really old 1300s, I didn't get hardly anything over the five minutes. So I feel like it might be getting a little bit weak. So we're gonna bring it in for landing on this next pass. And we're gonna to check to see what the percentage is on the battery. Let's go past the cricket pitch. All righty. So we are at, uh, we're at, uh, 11 minutes and we're showing 10% on the battery. So 11 minute flight was still a little bit of juice in the battery. Wow, that's extremely good flight time. I don't usually do videos this long, but I thought that some people might be interested in uh, what this airplane is capable of. So hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing a full what uh 11 minute flight on the habu ss 50 millimeter with a 1550 milliamp hour 50c ovonic battery this battery is brand new that was the very first flight with that battery and um it was a little more pricey uh being it's an fpv type of battery it's a small compact style and uh so i paid a premium on on um, Amazon to get this battery but man it looks like it has paid off and uh, this airplane I mean I'm super impressed and if you guys had any concerns about how hard it was to take the wheels off or put them back on you've seen they go right on and uh, right back off with no problem all you need is that screwdriver and it's super easy and uh, of course you get a shorter flight time if you're doing loops and rolls and all that kind of stuff or high speed passes in fact i did one uh pretty high speed pass there and i did a few i think i did a couple rolls so i did try to extend that flight time as much as possible but at the same time it wasn't completely boring flight i did low passes and um yeah super happy with today's flight it is a beautiful day out here big thank you to the lord for just blessing me with some great days for flying this summer and uh, we know that it gets really bad in the winter but you know can't have all good days and they're all good they just they're not all good for rc flying and and uh, the habu guys is just it is a really good size airplane I'm not, I wasn't exactly um, looking to go out and buy the larger one, 
I would love to see the small one again, maybe in a different color scheme or something. Um, but this one is a great, and I, you guys know me, I love the orange and black color schemes. It is just, it looks so good in the air to me. And uh, big thanks to all of you for supporting the videos and watching. And yeah, all right, guys. Until the next time I fly, hopefully tomorrow, but uh, yeah, definitely tomorrow, unless the wind is just ridiculous and I can't get in the air. It is supposed to be a beautiful day, so I'll be out here again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Grandpa Gary, and I just got here.